Today, I want to talk about resizing arrays in C and C++ and see if the one approach is better than another. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Today's video is, well, it, it could be a beginner video, but I think it'll have something for you intermediate programmers out there as well, maybe, if you haven't looked into this. We're talking about arrays, which I have discussed in previous videos. But today, we're going to dig a little deeper and look at some of the things that can come up when you decide that the array that you allocated just isn't big enough and you need to make it bigger. And so without further ado, let's jump into the code. OK, so today I'm starting with a really simple program. And I'm just dropping this in the previous example. So in the source, I've got array test and array test two. Those are from our previous video. We're going to kind of ignore those for today. But those of you who support the channel through Patreon have access to all the source code for all my videos. So yes, uh, you'll, you'll have access to that and this. Uh, I also have a make file. It's the same make file I did before. It's pretty basic. It just compiles things, you know, .c files to binaries and .cpp files to binaries. And I simply just added my resize array program to the list of binaries that were that was already on here. OK, so there's not much here. All I'm doing is allocating space for some arrays. I just want to talk through this really quick. So you have the usual C++ style. And if anyone's wondering why I'm in C++ today, the reason is because I want to actually compare the C++ standard approach using new and delete, like you see here. This is basically, yeah, so I have my array one is going to be allocated as a new array of ints at a particular size. This starts out as 50. And I want to compare that with using the more C style approach where we use malloc. We also could use realloc, but uh, maybe that's a topic for a different video. But in this case, we're basically specifying the size of an integer times the number of integers that we want. So these are fairly identical lines of code. And then I've got a third one here. I'll use that later in this example. But the point is, we have a couple different approaches to how we allocate arrays. And then down here, we're also freeing those arrays once we're done. So note that we have to free them differently, even though under the hood, maybe it would be OK if we allocated space with new and then used free to free that block. But we're not guaranteed that that will work because the C++ standard doesn't make that guarantee. You could be using different allocation techniques for new and malloc. So if you're using new, make sure you use delete. Don't mix and match your news, deletes, and your mallocs and freeze. But so let's say that I want to have some function in here that allows me to say something like I want to resize an array. You know, maybe I want to resize my array one and as usual in these kinds of things, because arrays in C and C++ don't have a size intrinsically built into them, we'll have to pass in the size of our array, something like this. And then maybe let's put the amount that I want to resize it, the amount that I would like to change it. So something like, I want you to add five bytes or five ints to this array. So, so maybe we'd like something like this. That's fine. Let, let's see if we can go create a function up here. And I'm going to do this in a couple of different ways, because we're going to have to treat our array that we allocated with new differently than our array that we allocated with malloc. Because again, we can't mix and match. Might be OK if we did, but uh, we can't make those assumptions. So I'm going to make a new function called resize1. And we're going to pass in a double pointer to an integer. And that's basically just a pointer to our array. If you're unclear about the relationship between pointers and arrays, I do have a beginner video on that that I posted previously. So check that out if this is at all confusing why I'm passing in pointers here. And then I'm going to pass in the old size and let's pass in an amount. Let's make this a size T and we'll make this one a size underscore T as well. OK, so size underscore T is just an integer that is guaranteed to be the right size for specifying memory blocks. It's what malloc uses, and it's generally a good practice if we are talking about blocks of memory that are a particular size. But we could use ints in this case because I'm not going to deal with anything really huge. But now for this first one, let's look at how we resize an array that we allocated using new like this down here. OK, so in this case, really, our only option is we need to allocate a new array and copy the elements over. Right. So you really can't resize one of these C++ arrays, you can just reallocate it. So in this case, let's just say just, uh, you know, and I could do this all in one line, but let's just keep this hopefully easier to follow for the new programmers is I'm going to say new size, that's going to be my old size plus my amount. 
And then down here, we're going to say that we want a new array, and that's going to be a new int of new size. So a new int array of size, new size. And then we'll have to come down here and call memcopy, and we will copy into our new array from our array. And what we want to copy here is the old size times the size of an int. Okay, so what this is doing is it's basically allocating a new array, copying the contents into that new array. So that should work. And then down here, we're going to delete the old array. And then let's just set our array pointer. We want to now set it to be our new array that we just allocated. Okay, so this is going to take this is why it's a double pointer is because I wanted to be able to change what it points to. So in this case, we can actually change the address that it points to and point it to the new array. And then down here, let's just return the new size. Okay, so this will resize this array. Let's come down here and just test it out, change this to one. And let's just add in let's just say that I want to add a printf here. And let's just for so you can see what's going on. Let's print out the before. Let's print out the new size. So that'll be a long unsigned. And then the after and let's print out the pointer again. So percent %p if you haven't seen it before just says I want to print out the address of a pointer value so that can be useful in just seeing things. We could have done this in GDB as well, but for a demo program this works great. So then yeah, so let's come in here and say let's print out my array first, then we will call this resize and whatever it returns that we're going to print out the, as the second argument in there that percent %lu and then we'll come in here and print my array one again. This is the after that should have been one. And so here we're going to get the before and after of what happened. Let's just make sure it all compiles. Okay, great. And then resize our array. And you can see, okay, so this was the address of our original array, the before. This is the new size that we reallocated it to. And then over here we get the after. So you can see they're actually two different arrays. We just made a new one and copied. So that's one thing I want to point out here is that resizing can be a fairly expensive operation if it requires you to allocate new space and then copy things over. So it's not a real simple resizing operation. It can be actually fairly expensive. If you do this a lot or if you're dealing with large blocks of memory, it can particularly be expensive. Okay, so that is the C++ style, the, the new allocation technique. That's how we go about resizing, or at least the best we can do with resizing this array. Now, how would we do that with our malloc? Okay, so arrays that we got from malloc, we actually do it slightly differently. Let's come in here and just make a resize to function. And so this one, it looks exactly the same. We're going to call it exactly the same, but we handle things just a little different. So I'm going to keep this new size right here, and I'm just going to remove the rest of this stuff. And then what I can do is simply say array equals, and it's going to be, we're going to cast to an int pointer and then just call realloc and realloc what array points to, to new size times the size of int. Okay. Now, yeah, so one of the advantages here of using malloc or calloc or realloc is that realloc then can just resize it. Now, maybe you're saying at this point, isn't realloc just doing exactly the same thing? Well, yeah, sometimes it is, but not always. And we're going to take a look at that. But even if it is doing the same thing, it's less code. This is more concise for me. So this is actually a win. It's actually a little simpler to resize it. But so let's come down here and let's just see what happens if we take this same situation and we do the same thing. But now we're going to do array two and we're going to call si resize two on array two. Okay, get all my ones going to twos. So now if we come down here and we compile it, then we can rerun it. And you notice that, yeah, they both work. They both appear to be doing the same thing. They're both giving me a new address. So the address changes in each case. So in both cases, we're seeing very similar behavior. Just one, the one up here happens to be shorter. It's only three lines. And of course, I could have folded line 16 into the line below it. So pretty simple. I think it's a little cleaner using malloc than it is using new in this case. But I also want to point out one other little thing is, you know, what if we only resized it by a smaller amount? Because one other advantage to realloc is that realloc may not always have to copy. So for example, let's come down here and let's let's just play around a little bit with my array three. So let's make a for loop here and let's start with zero and go up to something like 50. And then in here, let's just print out. So in this case, let's not print out the before and after. Let's just print out an after and a size. So something like this. 
I'm gonna take this out and then we're going to just print out my array three and and let's just remove this whole thing out of here. And, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize things in smaller increments. So let's just set array size equal to resize two and we're gonna add one integer each time. Okay, so in this case, I'm basically just going to bump it up a little bit at a time. And then down here, we'll print out the address and the new size so you can keep up. So what I'm doing here is rather than incrementing it by five each time, what I'm doing is inc incrementing it by one each time. And we'll just see what happens to our values, pointer values, that is. So if I come in here and we compile and then we and then we run it, well, what you're going to see is actually something kind of interesting. And I actually just realized that I messed something up here. I actually have been resizing, reallocating uh, array two. That actually makes sense. I was a little confused there for a second. Let's recompile it and let's rerun it. OK, now things will hopefully make more sense. Okay, now things do make more sense. Okay, sorry about that. So what's happening, and this is this is what I actually expected to happen, is we start off with this particular address where we're saying, okay, you know, you get the same address. We increment it by one and it still fits, right? It still fits in the block. Great, no problem. We get the same address back, the same pointer. And then if we keep adding, we, we finally get up to 53. At this point, it says, okay, I needed to give you a new block that's bigger. But you notice something is that after this, we don't get a new pointer for a while, right? Because what it did is it gave me a new block that was bigger, presumably because it said, hey, this person keeps reallocating things. So it gave me a block that was actually big enough to hold a lot more data, which is kind of smart. But so in this case, the realloc approach is actually going to be much more efficient because it didn't have to go find a new block. It didn't have to copy anything. So each of these iterations aren't copying things at all. So while most of the time, new and malloc are pretty interchangeable, usually they're pretty much doing the exact same thing. So there's not really a strong advantage one over the other, the C++ purist will definitely be like, you should use new and the C purist will say you should use malloc. But this is one scenario where using malloc is actually a significant advantage. If you are going to resize arrays a lot, you probably want to be using realloc rather than using new and delete and then just kind of reallocating things. Of course, you can always use vectors, which I'm assuming use realloc under the hood for efficiency reasons. Of course, that will only work in C++ and I wanted to keep things portable, but I hope this helps. I hope you learned something new and I hope this helps you make more informed decisions about your memory allocations and resizing arrays in the future in your future projects. So like the video, subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.